All right, new unit, chapter 8. This is 8.1. I suggest you look um, in your books at some point. A lot of these examples that I have are from the book, so but I would definitely look at them as well in your book. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are doing polar coordinates now, and uh, we've got some objectives, some learning goals. So uh, by the end of this, you will be able to plot points in polar coordinates. You will understand the relationship between polar and rectangular coordinates, and you will be able to convert between rectangular and polar coordinates as well as equations. All right, so let's start with what polar coordinates are. All right, so polar coordinates are different from rectangular coordinates. That's what you're used to. That's where they give you the x and the y, and you've got your graph. Um, the polar coordinate system uses distance and direction to specify the location of a point in the plane. So for example, to set this up, we use a fixed point O just like that and this point right here that's called the pole or the origin nothing you are going to get quizzed or tested on just so that you know we're talking about the polar origin that's what we're talking about next we draw a ray from O and that's called the polar axis so this line right here this is the polar axis okay from the origin or pole that ray is called the polar axis. Point P, now that's going to be assigned um, polar coordinates. So you're always going to see it kind of look like this. This point P is going to have these coordinates. And theta is going to be your angle measure. Okay, R is the distance from O to P. So where before this would have just been like, okay, so this is just XY. Now we say r, so this first number is the distance from O, and theta is the angle between the polar axis and the segment. All right, so let's start with plotting points in polar coordinates. So if we are given, so for example, 1, 3 pi over 4, now these are in polar coordinates. So we have our you know, our polar axis, where am I at? There I am down there. So we have our polar axis. Okay, so 3 pi over 4 gives us our angle measure. All right, so that takes us over to here. And then 1, 1 unit is the length from O to P. All right, so if it helps, what might uh, be useful is to imagine this as kind of like a unit circle. All right, and then 3 pi over 4 would be that right there. So just as a reference to start off with, you might want to do that. You might not need to, and that's great. Um, 3, negative pi over 6. What do you think that would look like? So again, some of the applications that we've learned before, we're going to apply here. So we would have our polar axis, and then negative is going to take us this way, remember? It's going to take us negative pi over 6, all right? And then our finished product looks like that. So the negative tells us to go clockwise from the polar axis. And now notice these lines. So this is just three units. So that's 1, 2, 3. That's the distance from O to P. Next we have 3, 3 pi. Okay, again, something similar. So we're starting off, and so we're going, this is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. All right? So again, we start here, always start from your polar axis, go around pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. That brings us, so we're basically making a larger ray, so to speak. And we've got three units, so one, two, three. So there are my three units. You don't have to number those. That's just so that you can see. And then last but not least, so I'm trying to show you all situations here. Negative four, pi over four. So we would start, now we've got a positive for our theta, which means that we're from our polar axis, we are going to go counterclockwise, but a negative for the distance. So what that does is that pi over four, takes us up to here, all right, and this is where our, you know, line would be, but our point P is actually down here, because we have gone negative 4, so you, you don't need to draw this one in, 
All you would need is this one down here, but it helps. So I would strongly suggest doing it. Um, and once you do a few of these, you're going to get the hang of it, I promise you. All right, so now, just so that you are aware, there is a relationship between rectangular and polar coordinates, and sometimes you need to consider both of them at the same time. So I've got some formulas here that are obtained from the figure, that this one right here, uh, along with using the Pythagorean theorem and the definition of trig function. So if you're going from polar to rectangular, <coughs> your x, we'll change that x, whatever that x value is, into r cosine of theta, and whatever the y value is, into r sine of theta. Now if we're going from rectangular to polar, Okay, so the r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and tangent of theta equals y over x, but x cannot equal zero for obvious reasons. All right, so from, from polar to rectangular, this is what it looks like, and from rectangular to polar, this is what it looks like. And why am I showing you this? Why do you need to know this? Well, because if we want to convert coordinates, for example, so if we want to change from polar to rectangular, um, those are what you're going to use. So obviously these are in polar, and we want to go to rectangular. So r is 4, and theta is 2 pi over 3. Now remember the formula. So x is r cosine of theta. So r is 4, so we're going to put that there, cosine and theta is 2 pi over 3. We know that, two pi, that cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. So basically 4 times negative 1 half, negative 2. And then you're going to do the same thing for y. Remember, y is sine. So again, x cosine, y sine. That should be easy to remember. And again, the 4 is going to go out in front because that's the r. And then theta, 2 pi over 3. So that's root 3 over 2. So 4 times root 3 over 2. And that simplifies to 2 root 3. So you're in rectangular um, coordinates. It would be negative 2, 2 root 3. All right, for the second one, now we're converting from rectangular to polar. All right, so x equals 2 and y equals negative 2. So we need to find r squared from that. So if you're, the, your first step is always going to be to find r squared, and you do that by doing, using this formula right here, the r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So 2 squared plus negative 2 squared, which is 8. So r squared equals 8, so r has to equal plus or minus 2 root 2. This is important. Do not forget about this. Do not forget. Hopefully you're not fast forwarding past this and you're seeing this. Do not forget that. So you actually have two answers for R. And then to find our, you know, tangent of theta. So we need to find theta, basically. So tangent is our Y value, which is negative 2, over our X value, which is 2. So negative 2 over 2, which equals negative 1. So where is, basically, we're saying tangent of theta equals negative 1. What is theta? Theta could be 3 pi over 4 or negative pi over 4. So we have our, now we have theta, and we have r. And remember, we have our polar coordinates are set up like this. Something to keep in mind here, okay? Okay, 2, negative 2 lies in quadrant 4. This is important. So we have to write this as 2 root 2, negative pi over 4, or negative 2 root 2, 3 pi over 4. And if you're not sure, I want you to... Basically, just draw, sketch a quick graph. So if you wanted to start with 3 pi over 4, which is where that's <clears throat> right over here, right? Okay, but we're in the fourth quadrant, which means, so if we're using this, and this is 3 pi over 4, okay, but we need something that's down in this quadrant. So which means we have to go negative 2 units. So there's negative 1 unit, there's negative 2 units, or negative 2 root 2. So that's why we had the negative 2 root 2 with 3 pi over 4. However, if we go negative pi over 4, 
that's taking us in this direction. Now, if I just do a positive 2 root 2, because remember, it's from here to here, okay, if, if basically um, that puts us in the fourth quadrant, then that's going to be positive. Uh, that's going to take some practice. There's no trick to it. There's no way to remember it. You just need to practice it, and the little sketch graphs will help. All right, now, uh, polar equations. This is kind of the last thing we're doing. I'm going to show you some easy to hard ones. All right, so in this next example, we are going to rewrite, not rework, the equations from polar to rectangular or vice versa. So let's look at the first one. These are going to kind of go from easy to hard. Um, we've got x squared equals 4y, which is obviously a rectangular equation. All right. So we take our rectangular equation, and we are going to, here we substitute it. Because remember this, x equals r, oops, r, not just r, r cosine theta, and y equals r sine of theta. And yes, you are going to have to do this again, kind of give you a reason for each step. Now for our next step, all we did here was expand. We distributed that squared to the r term and to the cosine theta. Multiply 4 times r sine of theta. Okay, now here what I did is I divided by r cosine squared of theta. Alright, so now I, this actually should not be here okay because when I divided by that it got rid of this R notice so all I did was do sine theta cosine squared theta which left me with R equals 4 secant theta tangent theta so basically what I did is just I simplified that step I took this one I said that's the same as sine theta over cosine theta times 1 over cosine theta. So yes, you get to do this stuff again. Um, so this is simplified, basically getting it in terms of R. So that's the main goal here. All right, let's look at the next one. We take R 5 times the secant of theta, so this is obviously a polar equation. All right, and... What I've got is I want to get this so that um, it's like an X or a Y. The only way to do that, we know that R is X, but we don't have any kind of like a sine of theta in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by cosine of theta. Now the reason I did that is to get this 5 by itself to get this constant. Um, because remember, secant is the same as 1 over cosine of theta. So by multiplying basically by the reciprocal, I was able to get it over here. Okay, now look what this looks like. This is basically x, right? Because we substitute x for our cosine Okay, so that's what you're looking to do. You're looking to either get a r sine of theta or an r cosine of theta, um, depending on what your problem is, and then get a constant, hopefully on one side by itself. Um, or, you know, it, it depends on what how difficult the problem is. Like, if you look at some of these next ones, um, r sine of, equals 2 times the sine of theta. So we've got another polar equation. And here... I'm going to multiply by r. Why did I do that? Because we have an equation that has r squared in it. Um, and if you remember, that's the one that says r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So remember, if it's a polar equation, we want something with x's and y's in it. Um, so I want to replace that r squared with x plus y squared. When I multiplied this side by r, the only thing that got an r was this 2. Also, I have r sine of theta, which is the same as y. So, r sine of theta 
equals y. So I was able to change that to this. Now I'm going to subtract 2y to one side. So we have x squared plus y squared minus 2y equals 0. And for you algebra junkies out there, if you look at this part here, this should look familiar. Yes, we get to complete the square in y. So hopefully you remember how to do that. If not, hopefully you've got some old notes to dust off um, to kind of do a little refresher. If not, I would search the web and just kind of like refresh your memory on how to do that because it's going to come up now and again, not you know terribly often, but it will come up. All right, and then let's try this last one here. All right, so here we've got r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta. So the first thing I want to do is make this, and this is, again, obviously we're in polar, so we need to go to rectangular. So we, I want to do r squared, or uh, <coughs> multiply both sides by r. That's what I'm starting with. I don't know how that got down there. So I multiplied both sides by r. So I multiplied this side by r and this whole side by r which ended up, should have ended up being 2, 2 r plus, oh, I see what happened, 2 r cosine of theta. Now, by doing that, I can, again, make r squared into x squared plus y squared. And then I'm going to change this. So I'm still going to keep my 2 r, but this 2 r cosine of theta, again, I've got this r cosine of theta, that I can make into the x. Okay, and then once I get here, I'm going to subtract 2x. So just as a reminder, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And r cosine of theta equals x. <coughs> so I'm going to subtract the 2x in my next step, which is going to give me that. x squared plus y squared minus 2x equals 2r. And then I'm going to square both sides again, or I'm just going to square both sides to get rid of this r. I don't, and the reason why I multiplied by r up here and I'm squaring down here, if I multiply both sides by r, I'm going to end up with r's over here and I'm going to have this endless battle going back and forth trying to get rid of it. Whereas now, I pretty much got it to where I just want to square both sides. All right. And I've got x squared plus y squared minus 2x quantity squared equals 4r squared. And I can finally get rid of that r there, and I'm done. Because I can take that r and say r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And yes, there should be parentheses around that before anyone tries to catch me. So, um, yeah, that's... The rectangular equation looks a lot more difficult than the polar equation. Um, we, at some point, you're going to be asked to graph, um, so you're going to be have you'll have an easier time graphing the rectangular equation. Um, but this is kind of why we figure uh, we kind of switch between the two is to decide is when we have to graph it. One may be easier than the other one. Like for this one, for example, this is the equation of a circle um, with the radius centered at zero one. If you uh, hopefully you notice that, um, and it has a radius of one, uh, just things like that. Sometimes it's easier to graph one way than the other. Some final tips: If you don't feel like you get enough practice with the class we're given, please I encourage you to do extra. There's plenty of problems in the book. Um, I can help you find the answers to some if you don't pick odd ones. Um, if you find yourself not understanding something, you need to figure it out early. Don't wait till like we're getting close to a quiz or a test. Either get help from me or go to the math lab. And finally, on the br bright side, there's only five units until the end of the year. So I'll leave you with that. Um, I had a lot to take in, but you'll get some practice tomorrow. And again, kind of like with last unit, the more you do it, the more sense it will make. Sorry for the long-ish video. Have a good one, guys.